Good afternoon. This is Joe Forward, legal writer for the State Bar of Wisconsin. Uh, local communities and governments across the country have been discussing and exploring whether to use uh, police body cams as part of policing in their communities. And here to discuss that issue with us today is Keith Finley. Keith is a professor of law at UW Law School. He's also a senior advisor to the Wisconsin Innocence Project. And most recently, he was part of the, he was actually the co-chair of the Madison Police Body Worn Camera Feasibility Review Committee, which recently came out with a report with recommendations on using body cams uh, in the city of Madison. Keith, welcome. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, my pleasure. So Keith, um, just to talk in general terms about body cams, um, why is this, uh, I know this has been an ongoing discussion for, for several years, many years now, I guess, about um, whether using uh, police body cams is a good idea uh, for, for communities. So can you just talk to us about um, you know, where that discussion is and what, what, what the discussion is about in terms of using body cams uh, for policing? Sure. Um, body cams, police body cams have become an increasingly popular tool with the public, with the police, with reformers, including President Obama's uh, uh, policing reports. Um, and the idea is in part uh, just simply to build off of the, the ubiquity of, of video cameras that we see in everyday life now and the, the way we recognize that it can capture and, re and record and preserve data that otherwise might be lost. Um, and so uh, police have, in, have uh, generally endorsed body-worn cameras as a way to help them uh, help protect them from false allegations or to help them build cases against individuals. Reformers, on the other hand, have looked at body cams as a tool for changing police behavior and ch police community relations with the hope that the cameras will do everything from reduce police uses of force to, to increase accountability and transparency in policing in ways that uh, have become really of critical importance in this era in which we are bombarded with images on a regular basis of police engaging in uh, violent behavior, often, uh, often fatal shootings, typically involving uh, black and brown men. Um, and so it, it, has, it is something that uh, the community is looking to in a lot of respects to help us essentially uh, preserve uh, and restore and record evidence, evidence of a better quality than we've had in the past for a wide range of purposes. Uh, the social science research on that is a little bit mixed. Uh, and, and suggest that perhaps some of the hopes that people have for body-worn cameras are overblown, um, that they are no panacea, but there remains the possibility that if used appropriately under co correct um, policies, procedures, preconditions, that they might have some of the beneficial effects uh, that, that people are, are hoping for. But really the, the, the jury is so, still so, sort of out on on the, the ultimate effects of body-worn cameras. Okay, and we'll come back to the recommendations that the, the committee that you were on had made and some of the conclusions there, but I just wanted to get um, the picture of the environment of body cam use in Wisconsin uh, right now. So our, lo our local governments in Wisconsin currently using body cams? Uh, it's not uniform. Not every police department in the state is using them, but uh, as is the trend nationally, more and more departments here are beginning to adopt body-worn cameras uh, in response to all of these concerns. Um, so uh, Milwaukee, for example, in the last few years has adopted a body-worn camera program, the largest in the state, obviously. Um, here in Dane County, where Madison sits, Madison does not currently uh, use body-worn cameras, but that's what our committee was assigned to investigate. Uh, but Madison is surrounded in, that, in this county by uh, uh, a number of police departments, most of whom do use uh, body-worn cameras. So it's not uniform, but it is certainly growing. And one can expect 
that probably uh, that trend will continue and more and more departments will be adopting them. Okay. And let's talk about the committee that you were on for Madison. It was the, you were co-chair of the Madison Police Body Worn Camera Feasibility Review Committee. Tell us about the makeup of that committee. And then I know if a, a report just came out um, um, the makeup of the community and then what sort of the recommendations and the pros of, and cons that were included in the final rep report related to whether uh, the city of Madison should be using body cams. Please. Sure. Body cams. So the body worn camera feasibility review committee was uh, a committee of initially of seven members with, with two alternates, uh, by the time we finished, uh, one of the regular members had resigned. So we were down to six uh, vo voting members at the end. Uh, the committee was designed to include representatives from some of the uh, minority and other marginalized communities in the city uh, and to represent a sort of a wide swath of, of, uh, of the uh, perspectives that may exist in, in the city. And included in it were several representatives from a previous study committee that I also co-chaired, which was an uh, ad hoc committee to review everything about the Madison Police Department that studied the police department for four years. And so there were three of us on this body-worn camera committee who had been on that committee as well. And there were two members who had been uh, on a previous body-worn camera committee back in 2015, um, and, uh, and then a, a couple of members from the Public Safety Review Committee. Uh, so they were trying to bring together uh, people who were steeped in this stuff, but also uh, represented many uh, of the various perspectives uh, of stakeholders here. Okay. And then in terms of the final report, what were some of the recommendations? What was recommendations and conclusions? I know there was pros and cons um, that were discussed. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what was in the report? Sure. So we, we went very carefully went through both the social science research that exists, uh, that studies the effects of body-worn cameras and the perspectives and testimonies of uh, various community groups and individuals and, uh, and cities that have experience with body-worn cameras. And, and we compiled a list of pros and cons because it turns out this is a very complicated matter. Um, and the pros ranged from everything from a hoped effect, uh, you know, a hope for effect on reducing police uses of force to increasing transparency and accountability, making community members feel safer. Um, a wide range of pros like that the cons ran the gamut from um, concerns about uh, equipping the police for mass surveillance of undesirable groups, um, the, the potential that body-worn cameras can present a biased perspective of, uh, of conflict situations between police and individuals, um, the con a concern that uh, one of the unintended consequences that we've that some of the research has suggested might occur in some places is that the presence of body worn cameras can increase the rate at which uh, people. Uh, are charged with low level crimes. Uh, and because there's wide disparity in our criminal justice system, that means typically more black and brown people are being charged with low level crimes. So these were all concerns we had. We looked at all those, we looked at the social science research and we came away with a number of conclusions. The first was that body worn, and this is a term we always, became almost a joke that we said it so often, body worn cameras are not a panacea. Um, they can't solve any problems by themselves. They are a tool. And whether they will have a positive or negative effect will depend in large measure on how that tool is used. Um, we also learned that from the social science research that it's probably not realistic to expect body-worn cameras to have much, if any, effect on the rate at which police officers employ force. Um, there are too many other factors that go into that. But it is possible that they might increase accountability increase transparency and thereby trust, um, uh, and that they, they might provide better evidence for use um, in criminal proceedings, um, both for the prosecution and for the defense, uh, depending on the truth of the, of the circumstances in the case. So those potentials all exist, but the concerns are real. 
the negatives, uh, the, the, the cons are real. Um, and so the committee worked very, very hard to understand those unintended negative consequences and to write into the, our report a recommended set of policies and procedures that would dramatically reduce the discretion that police officers have about when to record, when to stop recording, um, and what to do with the footage so that they can't manipulate uh, the footage in ways that enhances their ability for surveillance of unpopular group or in groups or enhancing uh, charging uh, of undesirable groups or whatever it may be. Um, and and so, because one of the things we saw in the research repeatedly is that in order to have positive benefits, we, you, you have to remove officer discretion. So they can't choose which incidents they're gonna record and which ones they're not. So, um, and we, we, we dealt with that and all of the other concerns. At, will those policies and procedures work? That's a, the other thing we don't know um, because they haven't been tried. Um, and so that's why our committee ultimately recommended a pilot project to test out body-worn cameras in this community under those circumstances with those very restrictive conditions and then to study it and to see what effect those cameras have. Right. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, finally, uh, Keith, is this report something, uh, something that other um, governments and cities can use as a guide to determining whether uh, they should be implementing a, a police body cam uh, policy or program? Yes, I mean, every community is going to be different and have some different considerations. But much of what the report does is, is it explores the uh, social science research, lays out what its findings are, what its shortcomings are, where it doesn't provide answers, describes some of the concerns that some community members have raised. And those are gonna be the kinds of considerations that I think most communities are, need to grapple with. So I think that this report should be, and, and I hope it will be, uh, quite useful to them, at least as a starting point as they begin their inquiries. One of the big takeaways we've seen from most of the policing scholars is if you're going to go down the path of adopting body-worn cameras, you can't just do it and then figure out what to do with the cameras afterwards. You need to plan it out carefully in advance so you understand the strengths and weaknesses. And so you adopt policies to govern the use of the cameras and the access to the footage in ways that is very deliberate, very controlled, and very much designed to enhance benefits and minimize negative consequences. And so in a way, I think our report has been really sort of a model uh, that other policing scholars have looked at and have told me now that this is a, this is a really going about it in the right way, being very thoughtful and deliberate about it. Whatever your ultimate out, uh, decision is on body-worn cameras, you at least need to under, undertake this kind of in-depth scrutiny and thought to make sure that if you do it, you're doing it the right way. Because if you're not doing it the right way, body cameras probably are not a good idea. UW Law Professor Keith Finley is the co-chair of the Madison Police Body Worn Camera Feasibility Review Committee. Professor Finley, thanks so much for, for speaking with, with us today. You bet, thanks for talking to me.